we have a project to change the genetic code to make any cell resistant to all viruses. And we just published a paper where we think we did that. Uh, um, uh, and uh, the, the, the way that it works is that the virus, all viruses, uh, as far as we know, depend on the host genetic code, the translation ribosomal machinery. And uh, if you, you can change the code without hurting the host, that the host could be a cell, it could be a, an organism. Um, so far, we've only done it in one industrial organism, uh, E. coli. But anyway, if you, ch if you change that enough, the virus can't mutate. Uh, there's so, there'd be too many changes that are required to get the virus uh, to, um, to be back to its healthy state. So, um, and we think that this is completely general in that essentially every plant, microbe, and animal on Earth shares a very similar genetic code to one another, and in any case, have a genetic code that they share with the viruses. And if you take it offline, change it enough, like sometimes as few as two codons, um, let's say two codons that code for, for serine, leucine, and arginine are our favorite ones because there's, they have so many codons for each. So they're triplets of A, C, G, and T. So, so like AAA codes for lysine, the amino acid lysine. So you ch there's 64 of those, and if you change one, you get a new genetic code. You can change two, and now you get something that's multivirus resistant. Um, so that's an example where you have to make so many changes, tens of thousands of changes on genome-wide, and they're interspersed throughout the genome. You might as well just synthesize it, and that's what was done. Um, so you're, as you mentioned, your lab, you know, gene edited pigs and you enhance them by making them resistant to some retroviruses. Do you think, you know, as a more visionary kind of question that you could use, you know, more precise gene editing, the DMNAs or CRISPR, or whatever, to eliminate viral spillover events from livestock to humans? So, I mean, there's a lot of viruses that originate from from livestock when we're raising animals right. in, in captivity. So, uh, yes, I, this is, uh, important. Um, so the, 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 the viruses that we got rid of were endogenous retroviruses, meaning they're built into the pig genome of every pig on the planet. And so, and they are, have been shown to infect human cells and to replicate and go into other human cells. So this is particularly, um, bad scenario. Uh, in immune compromised patients, and the FDA recognized this decades ago, and really was, I think, pleased to see progress being made on eliminating them from the germline of the pigs. So that's that there. But in addition to viruses that are built into the germline of, the, of animals and humans, uh, there are viruses coming in from outside. And we just published uh, the first example. This is with Lu Han Yang's uh, team. She was a graduate student and a postdoctoral fellow in my lab and co-founded uh, eGenesis and Kihan for making cell therapies and organ therapies. But anyway, as a side project, um, we published a paper on uh, getting rid of African swine fever virus by making CRISPR to attack the viral DNA. This is... Um, what CRISPR originally evolved to do is to, is to take out uh, bacterial viruses. We think this is the first case of using CRISPR in a practical sense for uh, eliminating mammalian um, viruses from the environment. Um, it's, it's using CRISPR against mammalian viruses. So, uh, but zoonotic diseases uh, is bigger than that. If we could bake uh, a huge fraction of the of plants, animals, and humans resistant to those viruses because of their genetic code. That actually anticipates viruses we haven't even seen yet. Uh, it should handle all natural viruses. Um, so like, um, you know, Marburg, Ebola, Ebola uh, HIV, CRISPR, these should not have been, these would not have been surprises. They would have been surprises to the scientists, but not to um, these cancer resistant, oh, sorry, uh, virus resistant cells. So I think uh, maybe we can make a multiplex edit 
that makes us multivirus resistant. These are things where you think it might be germline, but it might be just as it might be just as feasible, or at least feasible enough. It might maybe maybe be more expensive, less equitably distributed. The nice thing about germline is every subsequent generation gets it for free. So uh, some people say that's a bug or a, a feature, depending how you look at it. But uh, but if you can do it, it, uh, it will get cheaper to do it somatically, and it will be inherited in the way that, that we used to mean inheritance, which is uh, what your great-grandfather hands down to the great-grandchildren, uh, a set of technologies, tools, possessions. Um, that multiplex editing will be something that won't be germline, but it will be just as surely inherited.